Best Movies of the Year. Film critic Richard Krause is joining us now with some of his favorites and some of his not-so-favorites, <laughs> shall we say, Richard? That's right. You know, no one sets out to make a bad movie, but sometimes they escape into theaters. So we'll talk about that a bit later. I, I might argue there's a couple on your list that might be, they might have started out knowing they were bad. But let's let's start good right now. And I, is there an order to this or these are just the movies you loved? These are just the movies that I love. Uh, if you look at uh, the full list, which were up on ctvnews.ca, it's all done in alphabetical order because it's so hard to rank these. But I put Poor Things right mm -hmm. at the top of the list because it is by far and away my favorite movie of the year. It's kind of a Frankenstein story. It's a bit of a riff on that. Uh, Emma Stone should win all the acting awards this Oscar season. Uh, it is a, a movie that could sit very comfortably on the shelf next to Barbie uh, in that it's about female agency, but uh, it is weird and wild and altogether wonderful. And cinematography on it looks, uh, looks striking. Oh. It's spectacular looking, and the performance is not only from Emma Stone, who really pushes things further than I've ever seen her go before, but from Willem Dafoe uh, and the rest of the supporting cast uh, are just tremendous, including Mark Ruffalo. And I guarantee you've never seen him in a role like this before. Really? Yeah, because he usually plays mm -hmm. kind of a nice, sweet guy, right? Oh, wait till you see this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Uh, the Holdovers. I love the holdovers. So the great writer Armistead Maupin said, uh, if your biological family's not working out for you, maybe find your logical family. And that's kind of what <laughs> this uh, story is all about. Uh, a holdover at a Tony private school, one of the kids that has nowhere to go at Christmas, is left with a grumpy teacher and uh, a, a, a Cook, the, the school's uh, chef, who is uh, racked by sadness. Her son has just been killed in Vietnam. And slowly over the course of the runtime, the three of them come together and form a kind of ad hoc family uh, in this really wonderful, smart, funny, but not sentimental movie. And that's what I liked about it. And again, give G Paul Giamatti all the awards. He's tremendous in this. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to push you a little faster because there's so many movies. Okay. I like movies. I like movies. Great Canadian film uh, directed by Chandler Levac about a young guy who hides uh, his insecurities through a wall of pretension. Uh, it's smart. It's funny. It's completely charming. You'll find it on streaming and check it out because it's one of the year's best. Okay. American fiction. American fiction is the story of a writer who kind of gives up his own uh, morals in terms of trying to sell a lot of books. It's a satire. It's smart. It's funny. Performances, performances. That's what I look uh, like about all of the movies that I've chosen this year is you've got great performances. Jeffrey Wright, uh, Sterling K. Brown, Leslie Uggams, and that's all fantastic. And it's in theaters now. Uh, this this number five one, I've been trying to see this and I want to see it in a the theater. Stop making sense. It, it's the 40th anniversary uh, remix and, and you know, rejigging of this story, and it is fantastic. This is the most fun I've had in a theater uh, this year. Watch it as loud and as large as you can. IMAX is perfect. People were dancing in the aisles, and usually I like people to sit and be quiet in the theaters, and I did not mind it a bit because the movie is that infectious. Tremendous stuff. All right. Those are the ones worth checking out. These are the ones not worth checking out. Uh, freelance? I'm, I'm not familiar with this. This one kind of came and went, and there's a reason for it, even <laughs> though John Cena, John Cena, everybody loves John Cena. He's uh, got an up-and-coming movie and television career, and somehow he got stuck in this stinker with a bunch of other pretty good actors like Christian Slater and hmm. uh, a handful of others here, but this movie just does not work, and it's something that we've seen before, We've been there, we've done that, and it's been done better before. All right, now we're getting into the sequels, prequels, and all those other things in between. <laughs> the Exorcist Believer. Can yeah, you talk this one the original? Did... Well, not even close. And the original is part of the problem here because that movie was so groundbreaking and it gave us the spinning heads and the pea soup vomit and the whole thing that you expect, you know, when you see an exorcist movie, except that was, you know, almost 50 years ago and those scares were new back then. Now we're seeing them recycled here and it's kind of a, a shrug. It seems like, again, we've been there and done that before. All right. Uh... Expendables, always a good time waster, but you didn't think this one was. 
No, this one doesn't have the the camaraderie that the other ones uh, have had amongst the the teammates. It's essentially a Jason Statham movie, and I like Jason Statham, but this isn't one of the better ones. And I go to Expendables movies to see that teamwork, to see them all pulled together. You don't get that here, and the body count is ridiculously high. <laughs> and there is a, a a quote here from one of the characters who says, "The more people you kill, the less joy you have," and that really resonated with me as I was. Uh, watching so many people get killed in this movie. There's not a lot of joy here. Okay, and uh, my big frat, fat Greek wedding three, the honeymoon's over. Yep, the honeymoon's over uh, for this franchise, unfortunately. You know, moments of charm shine through, but the thing that made the original movie so much fun, uh, the intimate moments, the kind of, you know, uh, silly, uh, but sort of still grounded humor is missing from this one. It plays everything so over the top uh, that it just doesn't resonate. None of it feels authentic, even though the scenery is absolutely beautiful. All right, and we, we've managed to get through them. Here's the last surprised. one. Meg to the Trench. I loved it just because it was so terrible. You lost well, that's the thing. Sometimes a, a bad movie can be fun uh, simply because it's an absolutely terrible movie. I watch about 400 movies a year, though, and sometimes when a movie uh, is this bad and doesn't offer me anything, I just have to say, no thank you, Jason Statham. Come back with something else next year that maybe I'm going to like a bit more. All right. Perfect. Richard, thank you as always. <laughs>